Hello. And hello. Thank you so much for joining me today. How are you doing? Oh, no. Oh. I'm sorry. Well, I hope uh, you get to feeling better. Today, I'm watching this video by Haley Alexis, one of the absolute YouTube goats when it comes to German content. Definitely go check out her channel if you aren't already subscribed. You can see I am. Link down below. Things Germans do that just make more sense. Probably a long list. At least if we're talking about more sense than America. Hi everyone, what is up? My name is Haley. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you did not know, now you do. Hey you. Oh, I know. What's up? So in today's video, y'all, I'm going to be talking about, I guess, the German things or things that Germany or Germans do that make it's a working more title. sense. And I should preface this or put in parentheses for an American because this <laughs> could be normal in Europe there we go. or even in other parts of the world. And for me as an American, it's not. So just keep that in mind when I'm talking Perfect. about these things. So yeah, I'm going to keep this intro relatively short, simple, and sweet. And don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. The first point. point is going to be the triangle. And me trying to make a triangle with my hands is not really working out, you guys. And the vest that Germans carry in their... Wait, what? What triangle? What are we talking about? Car. This is not required in the United States, and I always wonder why. And so basically you have... You gotta carry a vest in case it gets cold? Oh, shoot. Hold on. Okay, we're back. Okay, uh, I mean, hello? Hello? Oh! Hi. I have this little triangle that has reflecting lights or strips on it and it's for when you get into an accident I think you go like 200 steps down the road 200 some Americans can't even step that far without a McDonald's break you put the little triangle down so people are aware that there is an accident ahead that there might be people um, walking around that there might be debris somewhere there might be oil spilt somewhere so people just have that is definitely a really good idea especially at night because at night, especially if, you know, the car gets turned sideways and you can't even see the lights or if the, if the lights break in the, in the accident. I've come across traffic accidents that I couldn't even see until I was like 100 feet away. So, yeah, this is a brilliant idea. Have a warning of, hey, be alert and be aware. And this also goes for the vest that you keep in your car as well. They're usually these orange or yellow vests that you wear in case of an accident. I believe they have magnetic, not magnetic, reflecting stripes on them as well. And when you're looking at how accidents are handled and how road safety is. That makes, so, that, that makes a lot of sense. You know, I don't know. There's something very German about that. Maybe it's just because it makes sense. You know, it's very logical. Handled. It's taken like up a notch. I feel like because of the Unbegrenzt, you have no speed limit on the Autobahn in some instances. And so mm. you have to be cautious. You have to be careful because accidents can happen. And just on roadways in general, mm -hmm. regardless of what speed limit you are driving, accidents happen. And so they're right. But especially it balances out the Autobahn where you're, I mean, if you're going to let people drive 300 kilometers per hour, you got to at least make sure that when they crash, People know. Trying their best in Germany to prevent other injuries, other accidents, other things that could be associated with, um, I have no idea, someone being stuck on the side of the road. So the next one you guys is going to be something that I found to be extremely funny when I first got to Germany. I mean, now it's pretty normal, but when I first got here and I was driving mm. on the Autobahn, I remember like a Volkswagen Passat or a Skoda Octavia, I think they're called, coming up behind me and there was a hitch like, and on that hitch, they were towing a little camper, a little sleeper. And I was just like, what in the world? And they were Richtung Garazi, wahrscheinlich for their Familienurlaub. And I was like, what the heck? They're towing a camper with a sedan? Is this a car? A multifunctional family automobile is pulling a camper behind them? In the United oh my God, that's no small camper either. I mean, that's pretty freaking big. I thought it was going to be one of those just little pop-up ones. In the United States, we do not do this. Like the association of towing does not relate to family vehicles or sedan. 
what do we got here? So all these cars, I don't think my car could tow that thing. <laughs> my Corolla, I don't think it could tow a camper. <laughs> and or four door compact hatchback back station wagon vehicles it just does not happen you usually have no you'd only ever see a truck telling something truck a big old working van or an suv because you need the super duty king ranch limited edition four by four lifted 27 30 that's for damn sure you need all of and i'm embarrassed every single day of my life driving in indiana as a man in a corolla it's a rough life. Not really. I don't care. You need all of these things to be able to tow. And it's just not even in the back of Americans' minds or even at the front of Americans' minds to tow something with their tiny Toyota no. Corolla. But I think <laughs> exactly. Because it allows you to do a lot more with your vehicle. <laughs> the practicality of your vehicle in Germany, I feel like you get a lot more use out of your Now vehicle. I want to know how much my Corolla can tow. Vehicle than you do in How the much United can I haul States. in that so puppy? You guys going to be hard for me to explain it to you guys, but I hope you understand where I'm coming from, and it's going to be the general um, speed limits and specific areas here. I find this to be a really cool concept. I feel like it makes sense. At first, I really thought it was very confusing. I still find it to be very confusing because I don't drive that often, but I feel like if I... You know, it's kind of funny. I'm still thinking about the towing thing because just the other day I was thinking, you know, it'd be really cool to own a jet ski, but then I'd have to buy a I was thinking I'd have to buy a truck or something to tow it, but hey, I could add a hitch to my Corolla. I don't know what the zero to 60 would be like with that thing pulling behind me, but. I did, it would be a lot easier <laughs> than in the United States. In Germany, I feel like you drive based on general signs and a general base understanding of like what is this one i'm sorry i was i was like okay speed limits these are the rules and this is what happens and these rules are usually on signs that have specific symbols numbers or pictures on them and so for general speed limits i think when you're driving into a yellow sign that has a city or a district name on it i think you have to add why is this crossed out i would think like this used to be wilster now it's shotten that's what i would assume this sign meant this town you know wilster that's not the town anymore. It's called Schotten. There go. It's six six kilo kilometers up there. Fifty or thirty. I don't know which one it is. Wait, do you guys? Would you say kilometers or kilometers? Kilometers. But I feel like I can say either kilometers. <laughs> you guys, I know that it's slower though. And then once you drive out of that city or district, there'll be another little sign with a line through it, which means you are leaving now. And then oh. you can speed up, usually to around 100 kilometers per hour. I could be wrong, like I said, and I might correct myself if I am wrong. And if you drive into a city, like a main city, I think it's either 30 or 50 as well. And then when you get... Oh, this is the recommended speed. So it's not a speed limit on the auto Autobahn, but it's recommended to go 130. You guys are going way faster than that. I mean, my car probably, that would be about as fast as it could go. But I know you guys, I've seen the clips. And to the Autobahn, they have signs that have, you know, lines through them. That means you can go as fast as you want. But generally speaking, you drive like 100 or 120. And then if there's a sign that says 80, you slow down. But it's like... You just know these things. You don't really need the signs. Like some signs advise you what to do, but it's not based. Like, I don't know how to explain it to you guys. Like you have, I feel like Germans know what I'm talking about, but Americans won't know because when you're in the United States, it's like 45 here. Yeah, I'm kind of confused. 35. This is why like getting a driver's license in Germany is so much, you guys need take it way more serious because we have our stuff like stupid proofed and people still screw it up. Here. 50 here, 65 there, 70 there, and it, it's constantly changing, and you yeah. don't know. You have no clear... I forgot to mention in the USA, if you miss a sign, you basically have no idea how fast you're allowed to drive. That's true. In Germany, you can use your surroundings to have a general overview of a correct speed limit. What? In Germany, if you are in a city, you drive... Right, right, right. I remember from the, um, the practical exam video that I watched, which was a lot of fun. Um, he was talking about how, you know, oh, we're going here, so... Standard speed limit is 50. Your understanding of how fast do I drive here or how fast. Am I In the USA, it could be anywhere from 20 to 45. Absolutely. And for seemingly no reason. 
And I do know there, there's some roads I know of where, I mean, for the most part, people are driving at least five, seven miles per hour over the speed limit at all times. But there's some roads that are 45 miles an hour near where I live and people drive like 40 because they just don't even know because there's nothing. Most other roads like it are 35, but for whatever reason, those are 45 and people don't even know. Am I allowed to drive here? It's ever changing. And in Germany, that's not the case. And Mike, he was a little confused when he first came to um, the United States and was driving because he was like, well, how fast do I go here? And I'm like, oh, it's 45. And he's like, but how do you know that? I said, oh, there's a sign that says 45. And until you see the next sign, that's how it works. And he's like, but what happens if like you drive into a city and this, you don't change? And I'm like, no, you just drive whatever this little sign is. And he's like, but they're not all consistent and i'm like no no every place is different so the next point is going to not only are they not consistent but they're not even consistently like placed like it's absolutely you could pull onto a road and be like i have no idea what speed limit i'm going the nice things about gps and stuff though is that some apps like i mean or not some apps all like google maps apple maps they'll tell you the speed limit if you're if you're um on a navigation but only for certain roads. It doesn't seem like it knows every single road, but that is very nice here in America that the phone can tell you what the speed limit is. We found you guys. And this is something that I've talked about all the time on my channel, but I feel like in 2022, they implemented a new rule slash law slash legislation. If you cannot read this, it's okay. All that it's saying is, that's, <laughs> is that starting in 2022, more difficult bottles will be added to the recycling scheme in Germany. This is hopefully going to reduce the amount of single-use plastic bottles. I love how serious you guys take recycling. I, I mean, I really do. It's um, commendable. You know what I mean? Like, America needs to do a lot more work in this regard. Regulation, regulation. And just that I think every plastic container up to three liters has to have fund on it. Or it might be every container, but I'm pretty sure it's every plastic container. When you buy something, you pay a deposit on it and you get that deposit back when you return. See, that's the part I didn't realize. It's kind of like when you get a beer at a beer garden, right? You, you pay a fund and you get a token and you bring that back with the glass. You're doing that anytime you buy a plastic bottle. So it's not like you're making money. I always thought like, oh, that's cool. You're making money when you <laughs> when you bring your bottle back. But no, you're just getting your money back. But that still means if you find plastic bottles on the ground, you could make money that way, right? Or is that illegal? I don't see why it would be. You're doing a service cleaning up. But you could totally like homeless people. Are there even homeless people in Germany? Like... Is that even a thing? But do they look for plastic bottles to earn some money? The bottle. And the reason I think this is such a good idea is because I think maybe it would help people in the United States take a second look at how much they are consuming and it would actually make the plastic... Largest single-use plastic waste by countries. Damn, China is... Well, honestly, China has like how many billion people in it? So this is really embarrassing that United, the United States is like only 30% less than China. That's crazy. Sick end up in the- Because per capita, that means we, we use so many more per capita. Right spot. I feel like littering is a big thing everywhere in the world. I've seen it happen in Germany. I've seen it happen in the United <gasps> States. But I do feel like in the United States, we are so, how do you say, like, so removed from how much we consume because it's just so normalized and we have no real consequences for what we do in germany it's like yes I have and i think if people had to pay a deposit on their bottles they would 100 percent bring them back to fond facility and the plastic bottles would not so end up not so easily end up on the street yeah absolutely people would maybe have a second thought of purchasing the bottle that's true too like, if you're too lazy to bring it back, you might not purchase it. Um, absolutely, though. If you if you incentivize people with money to do something, they're going to do it. Like, those bottles, one way or another, someone's going to bring them back to get some money, I think. To pay 
or I pay 25 cents. And you may be thinking, oh, it's only 25 cents, but that 25 cents adds up. If you were to take all of the fund that I have collected since living in Germany, we would probably have like hundreds or thousands of euros that I have spent and like recollected for my plastic bottles. And that it does seem really inconvenient though. I'm not going to lie. Like every single plastic bottle you use, you have to bring it back to the store. What about if you recycle it at your house? You're still recycling it, but you don't get your money back, right? That does seem inconvenient. But then again, that would also just dissuade you from using a plastic bottle, which is a good thing. That is a lot of money. And this is why I think it's a very good idea because it makes people reevaluate how much they consume. I'm just laughing because I know <laughs> I'm like the stupid American, like, how dare I be inconvenienced? <laughs> Why would we do that? It seems so inconveniencing. Next point is going to be a little bit controversial and there are some con aspects that I might make a video tailored to regarding this in the future, but I want to talk about the positive aspects of this point and it is splitting kids up to go to different types of schools. Now, like mm. I said, this is not a perfect system. It has its flaws. Yes, 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 yes. Wow, I've never seen this chart. I mean, I've learned. It's so complicated. It's hard to fully understand, but, you know, like the gymnasium and all this stuff. You go to primary school, then like in high school, you would split up. But I feel like it seems like a lot of people go to gymnasium. I don't know. I don't know why I feel that way, but it seems that way. Um, but this would definitely create some drama, wouldn't it? Like, oh, your friend... You but like you and your friend got split up because they're going there, you're going here. You feel like I'm sure some of these different ones have um, connotations about them, like oh, this is where the smart people go to real sure. So yeah. A lot of there have been studies about this. People have made videos about this, talking about the flaws of this system. But oh, I'm gonna have to watch a video about the flaws of the system. Do you like the general idea that children can go to different levels of school or different pathways for education? I mean, even if it is does cause problems, it does make more sense at the end of the day. Even if it's gonna hurt some feelings or whatever, it does make more sense in Germany. There are three different options I believe that German children can take and they're split up at an early age. They get pushed into those schools. Now I will talk a little bit about the flaws you guys because I, I just can't not talk about this Ooh, point. Okay. I do feel like it happens maybe too young and sometimes kids are pushed to do stuff based on their economic or social standing and maybe not based on their merit or their grades or their success level. But I do think- Well, it just feels a little weird because you're so young to be setting someone down a path. What if that's not the path that they want to go down? I'm sure you can always, like, it's not like you have to go into that career, right? You could always change it at university or whatever, right? I think if this was maybe worked on a little bit and maybe a little bit more time and effort and resources were put into this system and making it, you know, just a more functional system, then I would say it is a perfect system because I've said this many times. I don't know. I don't think there can be a perfect system that, because no matter what you do, once you're splitting people up or sending them down a path. I mean, you have to choose between you either send people too early and that causes problems or, but if you send them too late, that also causes problems. There's no way around the problems because it's not as effective if you send them too late before not everyone is made for the traditional school route not everyone is made to go to high school to go to college to go to university to get their masters and work as a ceo at this company or work <laughs> in marketing manager or doing all these things some people like construction some yeah. people like working on cars some people like working as teachers some people i don't know about germany but these type of trade trades in america are really dying out and there's a huge demand for um people like plumbers and um, machinists and stuff like that people like working as models some people like working as photographers and so i do think <laughs> that this could be a very encompassing 
school system, but it just needs to work out its tweaks. So the next point you guys is gonna be something that I already talked about and I think it's pretty funny and I think it's an interesting point because so many people were confused about it when I talked about it in my previous video and it is that you can pay for your gas after you pump. I'm trying to think if that's the way, right way to word it. You can do that here in America too. I mean, I'm, I'm, I say that, but I'm thinking, okay, to unlock the pump, you need to put your credit card in, but it's not charged until after you pump. Let's hear her out. So yeah, in the United States, you usually pay beforehand, meaning you put your credit card, debit card in the little machine at the gas station, and then you just pump your tank full or you put however much money you want to put in there, or you have the yeah. option of- Hold on. I want to look at this German gas pump. That's kind of intimidating. I don't know what it is about that. I guess it's just because I'm so used to this on the left. But over here, well, both of these say diesel. So I'd be like, uh, <laughs> where's the gasoline? Um, yeah, I would have, I mean, is there is there normal gasoline here? Because you can see over here in the American one, you know, diesel is... A separate kind of fuel, obviously. These both say diesel. Anyway, but this one has like a car on it. Tank full or you put however much money you want to put in there. Or you have the option of going in and telling the cashier that you want to put 20 on pump one. Yes. And a lot of people were like, but how do you know when you do that? how much you pay or how much I agree that's stupid I never do that how much gas you need and I was like you don't you just guess and <laughs> exactly the German method makes more sense because it's true <laughs> you do guess in the United States and this has happened to me well I don't guess I fully agree with this yes no I, I never understood why anybody goes inside to pay it's a it's a very strange thing I uh, I don't know why people still do that I just, I just put my card in at the pump that unlocks it basically and turns it on and I can pump my gas however much I pump, which I just let it go to full and it charges my card that amount. But there's these people who go inside beforehand. They're like, yeah, I'm on pump. I'm on pump four. Put $20 on pump four. Seems pretty random because you can never get all the way full because you don't know how much. So of course you have to go less. You're not trying to pay for too much gas. Me, like from both ends of the spectrum where you say, okay, I want to put 20 on pump one and then your car needs like $23. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's not <laughs> full. Like it bothers me when I put so much money in the- like Although it could be a fun game. I've never tried it, but maybe it's like, ooh, you know, I think 20 based off the cost of gas, you know, I got a half a tank. I'm thinking $22 and 50 cents. That'll get it. Then you could pump it and, you know, it's like a fun little game. <laughs> like tank. And then it's only like this small from being full. It, it, I don't know if I have an issue with this, but it really like irks me. That's called OCD. Or you have the other end of the spectrum where you put 20 bucks in and your car only needed $18.15. And then you got to go into the gas station and get your dollar and 85 cents. Oh, I didn't even know you could do that change back and it varies from gas station to gas station it's not like one umbrella rule that it's like oh you go into this gas station and get your change back no every gas station is different i went into a gas station in the united states when i was visiting and i was like oh my gosh i forgot to ask you do i need to get my change after or does it automatically go back on my card? And he's like, you just come back in and I give you the change cash even though you paid with a card. He said, but the gas station down the street, they don't do that. You just drive off and you get your change credited back to your card. And I was like, what? How? I understand why they don't do it in the United States, you guys. And it's because so many people would steal gas. So many people would. Mm. Wait, so how does it work in Germany? I'm, I'm a little bit lost here. You're telling me you just let you just walk up to the pump and start pumping without paying? Without even giving over a card? What is this? How are credit cards stolen at a gas station? Some people put on these things onto the credit card reader and it's it'll read your card and send it to the criminal. Criminals usually infiltrate credit card mechanisms through the front panel of gas pumps. They implement devices internally and these devices capture the credit card information. Yeah. Okay. 
drive away. There aren't enough honest people in the United States to make this happen. Too many bad apples ruin the bunch. So the last and final point, you guys, I feel like. But I will say, you can just put your card in at the pump and that's what I do. That's the only way I've ever done it. Put your card in at the pump, pump your gas, it'll charge whatever amount is going to have the biggest impact on the United States or would have the biggest impact on the United States and it is plastic bags not being allowed in a lot of retail stores in Germany. This is something that is quite interesting to me and an observation that I've made over the years living here is that when a new law regulation or rule is implemented in Germany, as long as it's not too burdensome, if it helps a general population and it's not too hard to implement in your daily life, People are pretty chill when it comes to just rolling with the punches and going with mm. the flow. And this is for every aspect of yeah, I don't think Americans are pretty chill like that. I think there'd be like riots. We want our plastic bags. <laughs> I don't know. They'd, they'd light their torches and storm the Capitol. Life. And so plastic bags were banned and there was no uproar here. People weren't in the streets, you know, protesting about the plastic bags or um, going crazy on social media about plastic bags. But I remember at certain McDonald's in the United States, they started charging 25 cents for extra sauces. Now it was because a lot of- Yeah, this is bull crap. <laughs> I'm outraged. They charge you. I think they do that at every McDonald's now. What the heck? The sauce should be free. I don't know why it should be, but it should be. Because that's the way I like it. The franchises, they had to A, pay for them themselves, and B, they were just trying to cut back on how much plastic they gave. Let's be honest. McDonald's is just trying to make more money. They don't care about the plastic. <laughs> let's, let's be honest. And so you would buy 10 chicken nuggets, you'd probably get two to three sauces, and there would be people who'd be like, I need 10 sweet and sour sauces for my chicken nuggets. And then they're like, okay, that'd be 25 cents each. And people were in an uproar. I need my sweet and sour sauce, and if I can't get 10 plastic... It is totally ridiculous at a certain point. I think after three sauces, you should just not even be allowed in if you're asking for more than three. You should just have to leave things of it then it's communism and i'm just like what is going on this that's actually not that's like the opposite of communism business is charging you out the butt for every little thing you do that's like not communism at all <laughs> and i always find it to be very interesting how like societies react to these things germans are it's whatever no big deal doesn't really bother me that much and what's 25 cents in the united states oh my gosh it's such an inconvenience my life is ruined and uh, i'm suffering and that is the same with plastic bags in the united states <laughs> it looks so I don't know. I know that some states, maybe not it's states. crazy though, right? I mean, this is what you see. But it looks so wasteful. Look how much plastic bags. It's maybe certain cities, districts, counties have banned plastic bags, but they are still very prevalent in the United States. For the United They're still fully legal here in Indiana. United States to completely ban, let's say, plastic bags at grocery stores, I feel like would cause an uproar. Yo, that noise in the background is the birds outside yelling at me to feed them. <laughs> I honestly feel like people would protest in the streets because of this. And it's so crazy to me because there are so many places in the world where people don't use plastic bags and they're perfectly fine. They're not dying on the side of the street. They're not having... Oh, look at this. Country's banning plastic bags. Well, there's one giant white spot right here. That'll be the day. To, I mean, maybe they have to care. I didn't know Africa was so um, green. Very, a few extra bags. Wait. I didn't know Asia was banning plastic bags, too. That's crazy. I did not know that. Their groceries, but it's just like, I think it would be such a positive impact 
it would get rid of so many plastic bags that people use on a daily basis that they have no but the plastic bag companies are probably buying our politicians so it's never going to happen Ubrablik. They have no understanding of how much plastic they consume when it comes to grocery shopping and using these single-use plastic bags and maybe using five to cover their milk or wrap their eggs in a bunch of plastic Five? Damn. That would just be funny to tell the cashier, like, can you double bag that? All right, now triple bag it. Quadruple bag it. Centuple bag it. Bags. It's not gonna rip. People just, they've lost all control of how much they're consuming. And so I think the best- Is centuple the right word? I know asking a bunch of Germans probably isn't the right move, but uh, I'm wondering that. Is it? This <laughs> way, you know, this is maybe the same and this is why they did it in Germany as well. The best way to stop consumption of these things because you don't necessarily need them is to just ban them outright. Now, I do think there are certain instances. Yeah, I mean, like at Aldi's, they don't, you have to pay for your plastic bags or something. I don't know. But anytime I've ever shopped at Aldi's, you don't get a plastic bag. And I don't care. I just put, I just use no bag. I just throw the stuff into my trunk. I don't care. It Like, if you care about that, you're a loser. Sorry. Sorry, Americans. But if you care that much about plastic bags, like, get over it. Just bring the shopping cart to your trunk, throw it all in there, and figure it out. Need them is to just ban them outright. Now, I do think there are certain instances where people will argue with me and say, oh, well, you need plastic bags for this or you need plastic bags for that. And that is very true. There are some instances where maybe you do need a plastic bag or like a plastic straw. I can't think of any instances where you need a plastic bag. Like, we lived without plastic as a species. We did. We did. Long time ago or a plastic cup. There are some instances where maybe you do- I do not like the paper straws though. I like my plastic straw. <laughs> Need this, but for the majority of the time, you probably don't and you'll be fine without it. But yeah, those are all the points you guys- I can't survive without a plastic straw. And these were all of the things that I feel like Germany or Germans do that just make a lot more sense to me. And so yeah, thank you so much for watching. Wow, what a legendary video. This should have more than 95,000 views. Um, go check out her channel. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys are doing fantastic. I hope to see you here again tomorrow. Subscribe for more German reactions. You know what it is. Have a good day.